welcome to the next edition of Atomic Ergo. I am your host, Earl Ray Neal, and today with me uh, is our brand new business director at Ergonauts, Sarah Runyon. How are you today, Sarah? I am great. How are you? Oh, ha- very, very happy to, to to have you on board. You know, our chief visionary officer, um, Steve Davis, uh, just talks so highly of you and we wanted to take the opportunity to uh, uh, share you coming on board with us, with our listening audience. So welcome to Ergonauts and certainly welcome to uh, my little corner of Ergonaut world, uh, Atomic Ergo. So uh, tell us a little bit about your background. I know you were the Eastern Regional Manager with Dorn. Uh, you, you own your own business, uh, Mobile Wellness Massage Therapy. And of course, you're on on with uh, Ergonauts now. So Tell us what you've been doing and sort of how you got here. Well, as I go through life, when doors close, I have learned don't bang on them because your door that's meant for you is opening. And if you're banging on the door that's just closed, you may miss that opening door. And that's what happened to me. And I just decided, you know what, let me just see what else is out there. And, you know, I did some research and, and, ended up finding Ergonauts and reached out to Steve, just, hey, tell me more about it. And it sounded like a much better fit for me, you know, especially as a massage therapist. I saw it as an additional revenue income because not only could I treat my clients, I could also treat their office space, you know, do an assessment. And when their coworkers see me there, it's like, hey, what are you doing? And I can say, hey, let me help you. So it's just, you, it just snowballs and it's great. Well, I, I tell you, you sure weren't met with crickets when you contacted Steve Davis and asked about Ergonauts. Where, where were you? It's his passion, isn't it? It's his passion, but yeah. you want to hear a funny story? Sure. I, I, I love I re- funny stories. I reached out to Steve. Mm-hmm. This was back in early April. And I was just getting ready to go on vacation. So by the time he got back to me, I was on vacation and I saw his voicemail and I was like, ah, I'll get to him later. Well, it was probably the end of April before I got back to him. And we're profusely apologizing to each other because he apologized to me for getting to me late. And I apologized to him for getting back to him two weeks later. But, you know, once we got our apologies out of the way, we just sat down and you know, got to business and, and it's been a fun time ever since. So you've obviously had a, a focus, a clear focus on health and, and wellness in your career. Is there someone in your life that motivated you or, you know, what led you down this career path? When I was seven years old, when my dad would come home from work, he would say, rub my neck, rub my shoulders. And I just enjoyed doing it. And I knew that was my calling the healing and helping people. And when I graduated high school, I'd been working in manufacturing. Well, a few years later, here I am, a single parent, still working in manufacturing. And at that time, we were working like seven days a week. I was exhausted. So I laid out one weekend. My daughter was like, Mom, I miss you. Let's spend time together. I said, let's do it. Well, my boss yelled at me and when I came into work that Sunday night, because I was working graveyard shift. And I just said, you know, after he said, your job comes first, I said, nope, my daughter does. And that was the kick in the butt that I needed from him to say, you know what, it's time to pursue my dream. And it was a great, that, that's a, that's a great story. There's always some precipitating event uh, that, that gets somebody going down a, down a different direction. You know, you've ended up with several certifications and you've got lots of experience in what we call the ergo world. Why, so why did you so, uh, become so uh, passionate about uh, ergo, algo, and ergonauts? I saw it was a good fit for me as well as other massage therapists. You know, there are some massage therapists who has massages their only passion, and they may not want to go to the school, you know, for the deeper education for ergonomics. So this is perfect for them. You know, it takes a couple of hours. You do your review quizzes, you do your final test, and then you can get to work. And I love it. Not only when I do the evaluation, I'm able to assess everything 
all my recommendations are right there and all of the links for my recommendations. If someone needs a new chair, someone needs a foot rest, wrist rest, arm rest, whatever, you know, it's all comes in one report as soon as I hit finish. So Steve, uh, the Ergonaut CVO says you're, you're a, a fireball and I, you know, I can see that. Uh, you've been spending lots of hours uh, lately with the uh, Ergonaut leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, sort of what's your vision? Where where do you see er er Ergo Algo going uh, in the, in the near future? International. Yeah. I've already got a couple of people from my LinkedIn connections from other countries reaching out to me, asking me about it. So I'm just following up with them and staying on them, and just say, let me know if I can help you. You know, you, you just, you don't have to sell it really. If you just, no. if you can get somebody to, to sit down and look at Ergo Algo and, and just see what a value add it can be to your practice uh, as, as a therapist, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it, it really, um, you know, it, it really sells itself for, for a want of a better term. There's a, you know, there's been a big increase and we're seeing, uh, a, a significant trend with massage therapists coming to Ergo Algo. Uh, you know, you say it's a, a perfect fit for them. Uh, if you want to just pretend for a second that you're talking to a group of, you know, uh, massage therapists or even physical therapists, I, I use them uh, a lot because my son is actually at Marshall University in the doctor and physical therapy program, and he uses it. He's already done a few of the evaluations uh, mm -hmm. can, can you, know, he was a beta tester. Can you, uh, you know, talk to those folks and, and, you know, give us, you know, give us sort of what, what you would want to emphasize to them. It's a great additional income revenue. And if you're seeing your client and they're coming in every week, every month, and you're working on the same issues, instead of being the revolving door and just beating a dead horse and not getting any changes. You just say, Hey, let me check your office space. And that's exactly what I did. As soon as I got my certification, I had some clients already in mind and I reached out to them. I said, next time I see you, we're going to do an office assessment because both of these clients work from home. And then I had a couple of others, you know, that I called them. I said, Hey, I'm coming to your office. So I didn't give them the option. I just said, I'm coming to you and they this know this is part them. of your treatment. Yeah, this is part of your treatment. Yeah. So that is a great segue into this next question. You know, home office ergo evaluations. Um, you know, let's talk about that for a little bit. Pre-COVID, 16% uh roughly of offices were remote. Post-COVID, over 30% are remote. Uh so how are massage therapists serving this market uh in a way to help? you know, both the employees and the employers, like the example you just gave? Well, when you go to their home, the their home office does not see their office set up in their private home. So you may have people sitting on the sofa. You may have people just using their ironing board or their kitchen table. And it is not good for, you know, your posture and stuff. Before I got into Ergonauts, I'm guilty. I used to sit on my sofa and have my feet propped up and have my MacBook in my lap and I used to be on it. Once I got into the ergonauts, I said, you know what? I need to practice what I preach. And I got my own little home office set up now with my standing desk. And my office chair is actually a saddle stool, which I think is very comfortable for me. It may not be for everybody because you know, you're, you're engaging your core when you're using your saddle stool but it works for me. And, and this way, if someone says, well, what do you do? I can say, these are the steps I took. This is what I've purchased and what I have. I always love being able to throw in, oh, and by the way, I'm an ergonaut. And they always go, oh, what? <laughs> and you have an opportunity. It's a perfect yeah. segue uh, in, into talking about uh, ergonauts and, and Steve's yeah. you know, vision for, for, for the uh, company. Um, are you seeing an increase, an increase in uh, MSDs in, in, in the older population? You know, Steve just talks every chance to anybody that will listen uh, about how we have 77 million boomers. 
there's thousands of people every day that uh, that you know, you know that that um, uh, move into this aged population retirement age. Uh, mm -hmm. wh what are you seeing in, in in your in your practice? When I do see my baby boomers that I'm working on, I ask them, "What are you doing at work? What's your body mechanics like?" And even if they're not in an office setting. I'll ask them, okay, in your manufacturing setting or whatever you're doing, are you bending at the hips? Are you bending your knees? Are you reaching above your head? Are you reaching below your knees? And I try to give them some little tips and things. You know, if you got to pick up something and turn, don't twist because that's going to hurt your low back. Turn with your feet. And, you know, I just give them encouragement and say, you want to take care of yourself. It's pay now or pay later. Because if you pay with your body now, you're going to suffer your health later. And I would rather. Sarah, um, I, I just turned 55 and I, and i tell you what I, you know, my mind thinks I'm still 23. Uh, and I finally reached the age where I can hurt myself sleeping. I mean, it's just insane that, uh, so I, I hear exactly what you're saying. Um, yeah. you know, about that, you know, we, we, uh, we've seen a focus in the ergo community, uh, on you know upper extremities uh, it, that that I always like to hear professionals input on this why do you think lower extremities are given so much less attention than upper extremities well i think when you think of ergonomics you think of neck back and shoulders and you got to incorporate your whole body in it and an example for the lower extremities, when I used to go to a nursing home and work on the residents there, a lot of them sit in a wheelchair all day and their feet were dangling all day. So even though it may have been more convenient for the CNAs for taking them off the wheelchairs to sit them on the toilet and take them off, they weren't thinking with their feet dangling all day and not having support, their low back was killing them. So I just started I just took the bull by the horns and said, we're going to put your feet rest back in. And I was explaining to family members, CNAs, and, and just letting them know this is why you need to do this because it supports their feet. This is by far my favorite question I ask. It's always my last question. Uh, wonder if you have given any thought to what you would like for your legacy in the professional world to be. Uh, like I stated at the beginning of the meeting when one door closes don't bang on it because another one's opening for you so you know just because <laughs> life knocks you down don't think oh my god it's the end of the world it's just the universe leading you to where you need to be you know we always give our um our guest an opportunity to use this platform to talk about uh you know their their favorite charity uh, some some organization that you're particularly fond of. So if you have a favorite charity uh, that you'd like to have our listeners consider, uh, would love to give you this opportunity to have you speak to that as well, Sarah. It's Running for Heroes. It was started by a little nine-year-old boy several years ago by the name of Zachariah. And what he does, he runs one mile for the families of the who pay the ultimate price, you know, the the um, whether it's a police officer rescue or whoever you know if they get killed in the line of duty he runs one mile for them and he raises money and he helps these families okay do they have and, a website or if you yes. could you could forward that to steve we'll post that yeah, on uh, so folks we'll leave that for you down uh where you can uh get to the questions comment sections don't forget to favorite and like us, follow us. We would appreciate that very much. Sarah, I've really enjoyed spending this time with you and getting to know you a little bit better. I can see why Steve is so fired up to have you on board. Uh, and we look forward to uh, working with you and watching Ergonauts grow into what, uh, you know, you and I both know it can be. Yes. So thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Folks, that'll wrap up this edition of Ergo Algo. Again, I am your host, Earl Ray Neal. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or you have somebody that you'd like for us to interview, you want to suggest that, or uh, as you well know, we, we have experts on all the time. 
uh, on any particular field that you would like us to uh, interview an expert in, uh, get, get you a little more information for that. Feel free to leave that down uh, in the comment section. You know, we are um, a growing company, but we're still at that stage to where don't be surprised if you leave uh, a question, a comment, a concern, or suggestion uh, that instead of getting uh, some type of auto reply, you get a direct email from our Chief Visionary Officer, Steve Davis. Uh, so on behalf of the Ergonaut family, I want to remind you to be good to each other and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Ergonaut's Atomic Ergo.